WBBZ TV is on the air with the Robert Wood Show with Buffalo Bills wide receiver Robert Woods. I'm Dave Jixer from 97 Rock. We're at the midpoint of the season. What needs to happen to keep the playoff hopes alive? We will break it all down. I'm Sarah O'Brien from 103 Through the Edge. I'll be taking your questions from Facebook and Twitter. There's still time to post your comments on the fans' favorite football show. The Robert Wood Show on WBBC TV is presented by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Mighty Taco, do the cue. Mighty Taco's new quesadilla styled burritos. And DeGraff Hospital, because we see people, not just patients. And now from the WBBC TV studio from 97 Rock, here's co host Dave Jixter. And welcome to the Robert Woods Show. And it seems like, uh, Robert, it seems like uh, the Seattle Monday night game was months ago, but it was actually yeah. just last week. So has the team basically moved on from that? Yeah, I mean, today was our, our final days of it. You know, uh, we put on the film uh, today, able to watch the game. And, uh, you know, forgot we didn't even watch it as a team. We were like, we're still watching this. But uh, just, you know, went through it quickly. Uh, got through a little practice today, walked through. Um, gearing up and getting ready for Seattle. I mean, for Cincinnati. Cincinnati, yeah, yeah. and, and that, that's going to be a big game. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the segment. But first of all, before we talk football, what did you do on your uh, weekend off? Yeah, I took uh, took the time uh, here uh, just to just get right, you know, heal, extra days of treatment, and then uh, final days of days off. And we're going to Toronto with my girlfriend, and able to check out the uh, the Raptors game, seeing Demar Derozan uh, keep his streak alive with the 30 points. Uh, so, and uh, just being able to relax, stay away from football, um, but back back to it uh, today. Um, so the week off really helped you with your with your injury and help not just you, but the rest of the guys get, get healthy? Yeah, just, just seeing it today, you know, of course the time and the rest helps. Um, just getting away from all the football, the pounding, uh, the running, just letting your body heal. But uh, just seeing it today, seeing the guys back, um, moving well, uh, just, just the rest the rest definitely helped. You know, our offense is getting back, seeing LaShawn moving quicker. Uh, Tyrod, of course, needed to needed to break, but uh, just guys getting back and getting ready to go. Great. Now we know we've talked about when everybody's healthy, this team is dangerous and yeah. could be you know a very very good team. Um, halfway point of the season, let's talk about the offense and as as a receiver, let's talk about the receivers. What is going well for the receiving core of the Buffalo Bills, and what could use some improvement? Yeah, I think the big loss this year from our receiver standpoint was. Uh, Definitely losing our number one guy, you know, Sammy Watkins, a uh, big vertical threat, um, big, big playmaker on offense, you know, takes a lot of coverage away. But uh, just, just, you know, coming in without him, being able to make plays without him, Marquise Goodwin stepping up, myself stepping up, looking at guys like Walter Powell, Justin Hunter, who has three touchdowns right now, just added Percy Harvin back. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing is just stepping up, making every guy accountable to make plays and, uh, you know, fill in for a guy like Sammy Watkins, you know, peace in, peace in here. But, uh, you know, getting ready for the second half of the season, I think the biggest thing, which we saw in the last game, is uh, completing the ball, catching the ball, and extending drives. We had plenty of first downs uh, this past game, and that uh, came from our receiver room. And the momentum with the offense, too, just was building and building and building throughout the game last week. Yeah, it was one of those you know, long drives. You know, we had to stay on the field. We had to extend the drives. And uh, like you said, it was building momentum. You know, we're getting the train going, and uh, we're putting up points at the end. You know, the train, once it gets going, you know, we're, we're, we're scoring. Okay, another huge component with Bill's offense this year, the offensive line. Uh, what is going well with the offensive line, and what, in your eyes, could use some improvement? Uh, as you see, you know, we're, we're the number one, you know, running team in the NFL, rushing team. Uh, we have a great running back, great line, who, who's, you know, clearing lanes for him. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, you know, is protect Tyrod, keep Shady going, and, uh, you know, pr protect Tyrod. In the second half of the season, we need, we need our quarterback. We need to be healthy. Uh, we need to have LaShawn healthy. Um, you know, the less hits on Tyrod, um, you know, the more the offense goes. Okay, and now we need to ask about Tyrod Taylor. How is Tyrod yeah. Taylor? Um, how do you think he's playing so far, and what do you think he could do to improve? I think he's, he's playing really well. I think uh, I can only recall two interceptions, uh, you know, against Arizona, and in this past, he's doing really well with the ball, uh, keeping the ball, you know, out of our opponent's hands, um, extending drives with his feet. 
Um, third and 21 was pretty much him. I just had to catch it on the sideline. But uh, he's doing all the work, you know. He's, he's providing a, a great ball for us to catch. But um, like I said, keep him healthy. He's taking shots. We got a break. Um, and we want to we go deep into the playoffs. It's getting cold. It's, the hit's going to hurt. But we got to, you know, protect our quarterback. How, how close is the offense? You guys all kind of hang together and, 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 and help gel and, and, and be, become a family. How does that work? Yeah, this is, I would say, the, 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 the best team uh, we, we've been. Just because we all were young guys coming in from college. Now we're all maturing, getting to know the guys. And we played three, four years uh, with the guys here. Even, you know, John Miller stepping up as a second-year guy. But he's the guys. The offense is really, really tight. You see uh, just, just in the huddle, it meshes really well. Which, uh, which, you know, on the field, we, we play well, we, we jail together. We're able to, you know, correct the O-line. The O-line is able to correct us, and, I, and that's the biggest thing. On the defensive side of the ball, what would you say is going well, and what do you think in your mind can use some improvement as well? I think the biggest thing is just being consistent. I think we, we always stop the run pretty well, uh, and, and the passes, you know, is up and down. we always getting after quarterback, putting pressure um, on them. But, uh, just we're doing well in the run. We need to be, just be consistent. Stop them in the past. We had too many, you know, big plays. Uh, we stop them all game, but the big plays, the, the explosive plays, we call them 20 plays or plus, are the ones that's hurting us. And it helps too when uh, the offense can get a drive going to give the defense a little rest too, as you know. So good yeah. to hear. It's, it, it's good for you to, to critique of what what could be better for the team. Yeah. And listen, when we come back, we're going to talk to Sarah O'Brien in the digital zone when the Robert Woods Show continues. And Brad Gelber is going to be joining us talking about the Buffalo Bills playoff scenario. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. Dave Jackson for Nice and Rock, of course, Robert Woods. And we brought back Brad Gelber, back by popular demand. And Brad's here basically to um, break down the Bills' playoff scenario. Robert, you guys probably don't even pay attention to that yet. No, not yet. I mean, we're looking at, we're just trying to stack as much wins as we can. You know, this is the point in time where it's, it's crunch time, getting the playoffs. And, uh, I mean, you see teams sizing up. You see where you're at. And you're seeing how to get in, but uh, I mean, Brad's going to tell us how to get in, I guess. Huh? Yeah, are you guys one game at a time and don't one, look at yeah, the numbers yet. One, one game at a time. We're always trying to win one. Like uh, we have all AFC opponents coming up, which every game matters, every game counts. So uh, you know, win the first one and then worry about the second one later. But you know, winning the first one is everything we need to do. All right, Brad. We're four wins, five losses. Right. Uh, obviously, 11 and five would probably get us in. But give us the breakdown. Yeah. So basically. Uh, at this point, kind of what you're looking at is, you know, you ask a guy like Robert, and, and the players are going to say, you know, we need to w take it a game at a time, which is true, obviously. You want to take it first game Cincinnati. But after that, I mean, they're kind of looking at a scenario where 6-1 and one possibly, 7-0 and oh is giving you the best chance. And, you know, ask Robert, I'm sure he says they want to win every single game they can. So um, the thing is, looking at the schedule, if, this, if there's going to be a year where you need to win out, win seven games in a row, this is the schedule you want to have because if you look at the upcoming games, you're playing a Cincinnati team that's under 500, winnable. A Jacksonville team that's two and seven, definitely winnable. You run into Oakland that's seven and two. That's going to be the toughest game in Oakland. Uh, you play a Pittsburgh team that played well yesterday, but they're under 500. And Big Ben's been—he's not as good of a quarterback on the road. And this is in Buffalo, so that's helpful for you there. You play Cleveland, who is 0 and 10 right now. You play Miami, who is one game over 500, but that's always a tough game in, a in the divisional game. And you play the New York Jets, who I know they lost the first game to, but they're and three you know and Rex seven. is not Rex right. is going to have these guys fired up for that game. Yeah. There's no way they're going to lose. The but Jets they, are not going to sweep the Bills. They have three wins right now. So if there's a time to do it, I would say you know it's tough anytime you got to win seven in a row or go six and one. But this is this is the season. I think with this schedule, um, if they're going to do it, this would be the time to do it. I think. So what do you think about that, Robert? Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds great. You know, we're, like you said, one game at a time. Right. But uh, definitely, definitely possible. We, we look at it. Uh, we see we have Cincinnati on the road. We know we have the Jets. Uh, I mean, we have the Raiders uh, who are doing really well at home. But uh, other than that, it's just, you know, play our game. You know, play, play Bills football, run the ball, put up points, stop them on defense, stop the big uh, pass plays uh, on the defensive side. And then, you know, our offense has been well, been consistent been consistent on special teams, getting Tate back, uh, returning. Uh, so, you know, the biggest thing is just, just being consistent and, uh, and winning the games. Like I said, it's very, very possible. 
uh, just just stay focused and, and stay locked in. Yeah, and one game at a time. And uh, I did circle the Christmas Eve Miami Dolphins game on the calendar as a Christmas present from you to me yeah. as a win. <laughs> so uh, let's head over to the digital zone with Sarah O'Brien from 1033 The Edge. It's brought to you by DeGraff Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Dave. Thanks. Make sure you're following along with us on all our social medias, especially if you didn't get your questions in this week. We're hanging out in the digital zone every month. Monday. We're on Twitter at Robert Woods Show and at WBBZ. We're also on Facebook at WBBZ TV. So get in all your questions and comments right there. The first question I have for you, Robert, is coming from our Twitter. It's coming from Gigi. He wants to know any update on Robert Williams and what has losing him done to the defense and this team? Aaron Williams. Yeah, Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams. Big, big <laughs> loss. Yeah, big, big loss for us back there at safety. Um, took a took a wild shot uh, playing against the Dolphins last time. Uh, we also have that game circled just to go back and get a win uh, for Aaron. But uh, tough loss, though. Know, he's one of our leaders back there. Our voice gets the team hyped, offense as well. But uh, just a playmaker back there, back there with Corey. The communication is great. Um, it is a tough loss losing him. Yeah, and he, he got hurt really bad last year too. He, uh, but he's on the sidelines though, cheering you guys on. I yeah, mean, his, his voice is big. You know, you definitely want a guy like that on the sideline. Uh, being an inspiration, you know, he's there every day, uh, just trying to trying to get this team rolling. You know, we must win, got to win games. He's such a competitor; it's got to be killing him just standing on the sidelines watching this game. He is, man. It's, it's, it's a bad shot, you know, bad bad ball. We got another one coming from Twitter for you. This one's coming from Bruce Richards. He wants to know why do you think the cornerbacks have struggled so much this year after being so good last season? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say that he's he's struggling or he struggled. I think uh, he's he's doing what the coach asked him to do, uh, which is you know protect the ball, run the ball well. He's not uh, turning the ball over. And the biggest thing we're we're trying to run the ball, protect the ball. And put she, up I, points. I, I think she was referring to cornerbacks. Oh, yeah, corner, yeah. corner. I, the, oh, Darby. Darby oh. Gilmore. <laughs> Gilmore. Oh, yeah. uh, just uh, man. I mean, we're we're, we're blitzing. We're running a lot of man. We put a lot of pressure on these guys. But uh, the biggest thing, you know, we, they're having a rough start, but they're, they played well last year. They know, they know the right techniques. They know how to play well. And uh, if the time to do it, you know, this time is now. We need, we need them to play well uh, and be, you know, locked down corners, which, which they are. I think something, too, is that you can probably attest to is that anytime you lose a coordinator like Donnie Henderson, a guy mm -hmm. that they've come to know and they played under and he's no longer there, that's right. going to affect the scheme and everything. I know Ed Reed's a Pro Bowl player, but yeah. he's a first-time coach now, too, so that's got to affect it as well a little bit. Yeah, and he's also more focused on the safety, which, uh, which helps the safety right. score, Graham right. and uh, Bland. But uh, like you said, our, our corners are the ones uh, who, who have to step up right now. We got another one coming from Twitter. This one's for you, Brad. Do you think we can see Sammy back anytime soon? That's a great question because Sammy was on the show and we asked about how the uh, injured reserve thing works and he wasn't sure either, but he was hoping to come back in November. Right, so the way it works is right now, uh, Sammy can actually come back in week 12 versus Jacksonville. So um, I know Rex today said at the press conference that Sammy wasn't quite ready to practice yet, but I think Robert would attest to and the other guys, they hope that he'll be ready for Jacksonville. Uh, hopefully they can win versus Cincinnati and keep a minute and uh, he can come back and help the team continue to uh, pick up on offense. That'd be huge yeah. having you and Sammy playing. Yeah. Uh, Tyrod would be very happy. Yeah, we've been we've been see seeing Sammy around the building walking uh, really well. Uh, just just high spirits, you know, telling everybody can't wait to get back. He's ready to go. Um, really just uh, just want to want to be fully healthy when he comes back. You know, I think the coaches are mindful of that. So when he comes, this is back on. All right, that's all the time I have for you today in the Digital Zone. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Sarah, and everyone who sent in their comments and questions. Thank you so much. The Digital Zone is brought to you by DeGraff Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Coming up next, Robert and I are going to connect with the audience here in the WBBZ studios. We'll be right back. Connect with Robert with the Mighty Q questions of the week. Mighty Taco's new quesadilla grill press style burritos are available now at Mighty Taco. Chicken, steak, or just say cheese. The Mighty Q is the perfect way to do the Q.
Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. Time to connect with Robert and our questions of the week is sponsored by Muddy Taco where you can do the cube. But first, Catherine Schick from the Food Bank of Western New York is here and we are getting ready for a huge food drive sponsored by 97 Rock, aren't we? We call it Rock Out Hunger. Yes, we do and we are so ready to rock out hunger and thanks to you, DJ Jigster, we'll be, we'll be sleeping in one of the Food Bank's trailers for a week collecting donations of frozen frozen and fresh turkeys and food perishables and fresh perishables and cash. Yeah, now tell us about the food bank. They desperately need food again this time of year, a problem that just does not go away. Yes, absolutely. Around this time of year, our distribution increases by 15%. We really need the food this year. Um, our families in need definitely need uh, meals for the Thanksgiving holiday. Okay, well, um, again, you can help out the food bank. Rock out hunger. You go to niceofrock.com, get all the information. I start living in the truck. Uh, Wednesday at 4 p.m., you're all invited to bring food. Catherine, thank you so much for, for coming out today, and we'll see you this week. Robert, it's time for you to connect yeah. with the audience, and hopefully you'll come visit me. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be there. It'll be a better time to last with all the wind and everything. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. What's oh. your question? Well, I wanted to know um, a little bit more about uh, if you're going to stop by at Rock Out Hunger. <laughs> yes, i definitely be there uh, give a, giving the turkey uh, and donating. Uh, make sure you guys come out and then donate as well. Thank you, guys. What's your name and what's your question? First off, nice jersey, nice jersey. I'm Lauren Redford. Um, hi, how is Eric Wood doing? Eric Wood is doing well. He's recovering well. Uh, they put him on IR. He's done for the season today. But uh, just wishing them a speedy recovery. I know we all are, but um, just you know, wishing them well and uh, hurry and get back. Thank you. What's your name? What's your question? Hi. Isaiah, and uh, I just wondered what's the biggest challenge you've faced so far in your career? You know, either high school, college, or the pros. Uh, the biggest thing is just uh, just being able to just be in, be in a scheme, uh, just not getting the ball as, as much as you know, Pop Warner, high school. Uh, that, that's been like since college, one of the, just being a, being a big team player, you know, going out. And I think I learned that going out and being able to block for our running backs uh, and just, just being a great, great team player, great team sport, uh, learn how to win. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Robert, and thanks to our studio audience. You can go to WBBZ.com to make your free reservation to join our studio for next week. And special thanks to Catherine Schick from the Food Bank of Western New York. We really could use your help. And again, NiceOrock.com is where to find all that stuff out in WBBZ.tv. We are going to play our Gelbert and O'Connell Hot Shot Challenge. When we come back, we'll be right back here on The Robert Wood Show. The Hot Shot Football Challenge is brought to you by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Call 633-5050. And welcome back to the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Challenge. And our contestants are playing for a gift card to the Buffalo Roadhouse. Robert, we'll start with you. Who's your teammate? Here we have Scott right here from Lockport. Hey, uh, Scott, you ready? Yes. We got to get a win. I mean, we, took, we lost last week. Let's yeah, go, you got shut down last week. I know. We need a win. We got to bounce back. <laughs> All right. And Team Brad Gelber, and uh, your, who's your teammate? This is Sarah from Alden. Sarah, are you ready? Oh, yeah. All right, good luck. We're going uh, to let you go first, Sarah, from Alden. Go right ahead, step right up. Playing for a Buffalo Roadhouse gift card. Oh, there man. you go. Nice throw. And Brad, go right up there. Sarah O'Brien from the edge, the official scorekeeper. And did that go in? <laughs> All right, step right up there. Guys are down 2 nothing, just like that. Oh! Robert, it's crucial that you make this throw to keep your team in it. Buffalo Roadhouse gift card up for grabs, and oh! Down 2 nothing. step right up there, Sarah from Alden. Go right ahead. Try to put this game away. And she made that, and she was over the line, though. All right, we're going to find out who won and find out the keys to beating the Bengals when we come back. Dave Jigster's wardrobe is provided by My Stylist at Macy's. 
Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. Sarah, who won the Galbro and O'Brien football toss? Well, it was Galbro not. Connell, excuse me. It wasn't as tight as I thought it was going to be. It looks like Brad and Sarah should really be trying out for the NFL. <laughs> two weeks in a row. Listen, Brad came back for a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice job. Sure hey, uh, you are coming off a big game, um, 10 catches and a career high. So what are you going to do to keep that momentum going and scoring more points in the beating the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, just going to try to do it again. You know, we, we fell off short uh, against Seattle. Uh, just got to play consistent football, you know, keep the drives going like we did. Uh, did great on third downs this past game. Uh, keep the drives alive, uh, put up some points, and let our defense do the rest. Is Cincinnati a tough place to play? I hear it's pretty loud. I hear it's pretty loud. You know, their, their defense plays well uh, at home. But uh, just, just going out there and just trying to stop A.J. Green and, uh, and uh, Andy Dalton. On behalf of uh, Robert Woods and the Robert Woods Show, Sarah O'Brien from 103.3 The Edge, and a special appearance by Brad Gelber. Nice job. Go Bills. And hopefully we can uh, talk about a win next Monday right here on WBBZ's TV, TV's Robert Woods Show. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, you can go to WBBZ.com and reserve your spot in the studio audience. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon.